episode, I, you know, episode, I don't even know, you know why Elliot, because <laughs> the, I mean, I do, if we go based off of, of chronological order, it will be 33, but it could be 32 because you, that you might air before our guest that we just spoke to from um, 12 o'clock to one ten, And that was the great Bobby Ryan. Oh, Bobby Ryan. He's excellent. Man, yep. you know what was excellent was the Sportsnet uh, feature that uh, you guys put on there, Christine Simpson, when she did uh, The Secret Life of Bobby Ryan. And we, we talked to him about his whole life and sobriety and what, what an absolute just polarizing figure, man. Like this what a guy. Great, what a great person. He just seems like a, a really, really good guy. You know, I, I say this, all my interactions with him – have been uh, very much like that. If if you ask him a question, you're going to get an honest answer, whether you like it or not. He's pretty much out there. He doesn't hide very much. He talks about the good, the bad, everything he's been through. He's he's definitely a great talker. There's no question about that. Yeah, we had we had a great time with him. Um, some ups and downs in his life, but he's he's doing great, man. He's he's doing great. So. Uh, we look forward to that one coming out. I'll tell now, you. Is what, he officially retired or anything no. like that? No. Okay. No. No. He. He. Uh, I think he was hoping to go over to the Olympics. Yes. With the U.S. and he got a phone call an hour before that mm -hmm. we spoke, saying that they were going to go in a different direction. Oh, that's that's too bad. Yeah. So I think he was a little bit disappointed, but uh, mm -hmm. I think he's still looking to play. Um, doesn't know where it's going to be. Uh, I know that there's been more talk about taxi squads in the national hockey league, all this kind of stuff. And, uh, he is still putting himself out there, you know, trying he's to work his ass off. He looks like he's in good shape. He yeah. looks like he's in good shape. So, you know, we're, you know, I'll tell you what, we're Bobby Ryan fans here. So we're, we're rooting for him, but, uh, you know, who knows what will happen. And, but anyway, um, it was fantastic. Speaking of who knows what will happen, let's get right into it with you. First of all, how are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're, 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 we're doing better than Evander Kane uh, right mm -hmm. now, you know, and that's mm -hmm. kind of where we want to start with you because Riv said that there's a rumor that Calgary might be in on him. But, but when did all this kind of uh, start and, and uh, what's going on with Kane? So basically what happened was, uh, as you guys saw, they put him on waivers to terminate his contract on Saturday. And because no one claimed him by Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern, they were eligible to do it. And, I, and I've, I've heard now that about two or three minutes after he cleared waivers, the Sharks officially filed a notice that they were terminating his contract. And the Players Association filed a grievance uh, last night. So we have to see how this all plays out. Um, you know, as you guys know, Kane was suspended earlier this year, 21 games for using a fake vaccine passport. And uh, he tested. Now, what the Sharks are alleging is he tested positive uh, for the coronavirus on December 21st. And according to AHL rules, there's a 10 day protocol. And they are alleging that on December the 29th, which was eight days in, he flew to Vancouver and he did not have medical permission to take that flight. And they're also saying he was supposed to return to the Barracuda, the AHL team he was playing for on December 31st, he did not return to until the, uh, January 6th. So they're alleging both that he broke the protocol and he did not return promptly, and therefore it's a, a breach of his deal. Now, Kane is disputing that. Uh, we'll see where this goes, but uh, right now he's an unrestricted free agent, and um, there's going to be a big fight here. Um, you know, one of the things I've been told... $22.9 million left on like that, that contract. Yeah, $23 million. And, you know, there's... You know, I mean, one of the reasons the NHLPA is appealing, and you guys were both big NHLPA guys, is that, you know, as one agent said to me, you can't allow a precedent that if a player breaks protocol, they can have their contract terminated. So you have to fight that protocol. Um, but, you know, I, I think also... Like you said, there's 23 million at stake. It's gonna be it's gonna be a big fight. I my guess, guys, and I and I and I say and I say this, it's purely a guess. There's gonna be a settlement here. Like just imagine you walk into a room and you know behind door A is 23 million dollars and door B is zero. How many people are making that bet? Yeah. What is the protocol for that? So he jumps on a plane, which is uh you know, again, he tests positive on the 21st, you said. Yes. He gets on a plane that's, on that's the, the 
on the 28th no, no. Uh, or 29th. Mm-hmm. What is, is it supposed to be a 10 day quarantine for him? Is that, uh, uh, according to the AHL rules, it's a 10 day quarantine, but also there's the border issue. You know, can you go over the border at that time? Um, so there's, there's a lot at play here. There's a lot at play. Slippery, slippery. Does he, uh, so let's just say the termination of the con what happens? What's the grievance? I mean, what, I mean, not what is the grievance, but what can the grievance, what can they get from the grievance? I guess it's money they're looking for, not necessarily a roster spot or a place to play because San Jose clearly wants to be done with them, but the grievance is, is just over money. And then do you think somebody will sign him for a playoff run? Um, I think I'm getting, uh, two, uh, I'm getting two really different uh, uh, responses on all that here. And what I'm hearing is there are some teams that are saying, absolutely no, that we're not doing this, but there are other teams that are saying, yes, uh, there is interest. So we'll see where this goes. Why wouldn't you, you know, I, I listen, why wouldn't I mean, you? Because look, like Kane's yeah. got a history. I mean, Whatever is true or not true, there's always stuff around them, right? So yep. that's the issue. Every team he's gone to, Craig. Well, what do you mean? Why wouldn't you? Because he's a Vander Kane. And- well, uh, I'll tell you this: he he was in Winnipeg, and that leadership group there did not take a shit. Okay, and they sent them packing. Dustin Bufflin, um, Andrew Ladd. They were the older statesmen there, and they did not put up with his stuff. And they were not okay with how he was acting. He got traded to Buffalo. Buffalo at the time didn't have hardly any leadership on the team that can control and, 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 and try and, you know, put Kane in his place. He goes out to San Jose. You know, I, I, I don't know what he's doing out there. I, I believe that if you are a Vander Kane, and I think that he understands that he has made some mistakes throughout his career. Okay. He's, he's not a young guy anymore. He's, he's 30. The team that goes to acquire him is going to be a team that is, is I think a team that is trying to win the Stanley cup this year, which means to me that you will have significant leadership on that team. And if you can deal with Evander Kane for the next three months and he, you know, does what he needs to do, he could be a major, major asset to a team to try and win. He could be a major, major distraction. He could be, he could be, but if you have the right leadership in the locker room, he, he will not be a major problem. Let's let our guests talk. We can bicker about this anytime. No, I think you both have points. But the only thing I would add to you, Craig, is it's not like, I wonder if it's like, first of all, what does your owner think about it, right? Uh, What does ownership think about it? That's number one. What is your fan base going to think about it? That's number two. These are always questions. But I I think it's not just team about winning the Stanley Cup. I think you're going to be some teams that maybe are, uh, maybe have some desperation to make the playoffs too that might say, Oh, you know, we really need to get in this year. We want to do this. So mm-hmm. I don't know where this is all going to go. I, um, I, I do know there are teams poking around it. Um, I just think right now the question is going to be, you know, does an owner say no? Are you worried about what your fans think? All of this stuff is going to be an issue. Um, another, another topic I, I want to touch on, cause I'll forget this one. Will the Sabres leaf game be postponed to next year? The outdoor game that's expected to happen. When is it in March I, in Hamilton? I don't think we know yet. I, I honestly don't think we know yet. Andrew, do they have a time? Uh, do they have a timetable on that? I got to think probably early February at the latest. Okay. All right. At well, I guess, latest. I guess we can, I guess we can circle back to that one. Yeah. Uh, Nick Nick Ritchie passes through waivers. How does he pass through waivers? What's what's I, going on with this guy, Elliot? Well, first of all, I think I don't think he passes through waivers if it's just this year, but because he's got another year at two and a half million, that's why he passed through waivers. And his he actual number is three 
three and yes. three point yes. three, I think. So yes, that that's why he passed through waivers, and and that's the only reason he got through it, Craig. And I think if he didn't have that, I think somebody would have taken a chance on him. Um, you know, that's the reason. So far, it hasn't worked. And uh, you know, and then Saturday night he scored a, a big power play goal for Toronto, and then he took a penalty at the end of regulation in a in a hell of a game between Toronto and Colorado. Um, you know, it was an up and down night for him. And, but you know, the one thing that really stood out, and I, I think you guys can really respect this, when he scored, those players were so excited for him. I always think that's a a sign of a team that gets along really well when a guy like that scores is going through a terrible time and everybody's like jumping up and down and going out of their way to make him feel good. But he had a rough end to that game. And Andrew, it's, it's simply the contract, which is why he isn't there. Are you guys really that hard on players in Toronto? When I say you guys, I mean, media. Is it no, really? I, that I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's, laughs> I'm not talking sports net. I'm talking media. Is it? What is the, what is the, expectation of every player in the Leafs like how like is it easy to get mad at players when they struggle I guess up there uh, I say up there I mean you're only two hours away but I, I think I think it's always harder in Canada I do I think some markets are tougher than others like for me like I don't think Toronto is necessarily the meanest market in the league but there's there's just a lot of volume right like I, I think there's markets that are meaner than Toronto but there's just a lot of media here and it, there's a lot of noise. And if you don't handle it really well, like that's one thing they've gotten on Marner about is stop listening to stuff that doesn't matter. Limit the, the noise or the opinions that you listen to. And they've also asked the people around them to stop making, you know, stop uh, telling him things like that. So that's where I think the effect, the effect comes from, Andrew. Like Montreal, I think, is really tough. And, and Vancouver, I think, is really tough. Toronto, I don't think is necessarily as tough. I just think there's a lot of it. All right. All right. I, you could have handled it though. Oh shit. All you got to do up there is drop the gloves, win or lose. And you're, they love you. Right. I mean, anyone loves a fighter. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. No, that's well, no. Some of the most popular players up here were Domi. I just would have been happy to get some press. (laughs) You would have gotten some. Good. Like Craig, what was the worst thing that ever happened to you in Montreal? Like, what was the worst thing anybody said about you? you got booed for a year straight. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you no, serious right now? You're no, no. I know. I'm. Was serious. that a serious I'm, question? I, no, it was because, uh, like, like remember, my career at hockey night was still really starting when you were at your peak in Montreal. So I just okay, don't remember then. that far back. I I'm got, not, no, I'm not knocking you. I'm not ripping. ripping this you. is this is. Uh, so uh, let me let me tell you about Montreal. Montreal to me is the toughest. It is the greatest place in the National Hockey League to play. Mm -hmm. Without question. And there is nothing. There is not a team even remotely close. But it is the worst place to play in the National Hockey League. And there is not a place that comes close. Okay? There was an incident back years ago, okay, where one of our defensemen, was getting booed. He was our number one guy, Patrice Brisebois. Brisebois. He was our number one guy. Been our number one point producer for years, played the most minutes, and there was some, some tough press going back and forth between the French and the English media in, mm-hmm. Montre- in Montreal. And it got to a point that the fans were booing Patrice Brisebois every single time he touched the puck in our own building. This I remember on, playing against you guys when that This happened. went on for 20, 30 games. And finally, we were there was about 10 games left in the season, and we had ended up losing a game that night, and we couldn't afford to lose it because we were right there. We were flip-flopping back and forth between eight and nine in the standings. And the, the media came to me after the game because – they only came to like three, four guys. It was the same guys talking all the time. And I was frustrated. I was angry. I was so, I was so sick to my stomach for Patrice Brigeois. They asked me, you know, a question, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it, I basically said, if the Montreal fan base think by booing our best defenseman is helping us, they obviously don't know hockey. <laughs> that was my, that, that was it. Now, we got on a plane that night, 
flew and played two games on the road and we came back and we had a day off and then we played the, like the next night in Montreal. And I remember going out for my, my, my morning skate and I had to do two media sessions because there was hundreds of people <laughs> waiting for me. And Donald Beauchamp, I'll still remember this. He was our public relations guy, pulled me aside off the ice. And he said, you need to apologize to the fans. Hmm. And I looked at Donald and I said, fuck you. I said, if that's the message you're going to give me, get out of my face and I'll deal with this shit myself. And I went in there and I just, my very first question was from a media member who is not even involved with hockey at all, but we had media from everywhere. Yeah. The first question was, you're not Maurice the Rocket Richard. You're not Jean Beliveau. You're not Guy Lafleur. Who are you to say that the fans here in Montreal don't know hockey? And I just went on my spiel. I was like, whatever, buddy. I'll say whatever I want to protect my teammates. It's wrong what's going on right now because it has nothing to do with Patrice Brisebois. It has to do with the media this French and English section of, of the paper were fighting against each other. So it came to a point that the French media was like, okay, so if the English media is going to rip on Patrice Brisebois, we're going to go after an, we're going to go after an English guy. So they started writing bad press about me. And now all of the fans, I got booed. No word of a lie for the last 10 games that year. Every time I touched the puck. Now it was not a problem because I had a big smile on my face and all the boys on the team knew about it and it wasn't a big deal, but it lasted into the next year. And I got booed every time I touched the puck because I was sticking up for one of my teammates because I thought it was completely wrong with what was going on. And that's Montreal in a heartbeat. I dealt with this every day. I would be walking down the street with my wife and I would have people, three guys come up to me, Greg, Greg, be there. Oh my God, this is great. Take a picture. Okay. You know, all of a sudden the guy's like, hey, you remember that pass you made in the third period at the, the, the 11 minute mark? Why would you make that pass? Why wouldn't you hit Sako Koivu in the middle? <laughs> this is what I dealt with my entire life there. You could you know, I got to tell you, Rose. I wish that when they asked you, you're not Lafleur, you're not Belleville, you're not Richard, you would have answered yes, but I'm better than all three of them combined. Oh, God. <laughs> you, the you should have said they couldn't killed? have played in this era. <laughs> <laughs> that would have really fired them no. up. Elliot, uh, I, I mean, thanks to Riv's 11 minute story there. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're, we're running low on, we're running low on time. We did. Cause we know you're a good story. It was better than anything I had. Well, you know, it, it is a good story. It is a good story. But when you've heard it for the 17th time in, in your life, you know, I it, told it, that before uh, I might've heard, nah, maybe I didn't, who, who cares? But anyway, I'm going to ask you after I ask you this question, what is the big story right now in hockey? But I sent you a text last week, number 25 in your 30, in your 32 thoughts, by the way, go read Elliot's 32 thoughts. It's fantastic. There's a, there's a plug. I, I keep forgetting to mention that every week. And I said, you said, what you said, which one is it? I can't remember. They all jumbled together. And, and I just, let me just read it quickly because I feel like this is what this pertains to the Sabres. Like when I asked you a while ago about it, are they for sale? And I feel like this is maybe something that, that could go for them. It said it didn't get a lot of attention at the board of governors meeting, but the most influential move made there was the NHL agreeing to allow private equity funds to buy into NHL teams. Commissioner Gary Bettman was tight lipped regarding details as it's more about the realities of COVID effect on the business than something he had incredible enthusiasm for front front office sports reported this week that teams can sell up to 30% of their ownership to such firms and these firms can own parts up to five teams, maximum 20% in any team with a minimum 20 million U.S. investment in each one. The first such advisor, if I have this right, Arctos Sports Partners, bought into both Minnesota and Tampa Bay. This development is going to strengthen current ownership groups that wish to use them. 
how many teams are going to use this is shocking to me that was shocking to me to read that and and why why was it shocking to you because i just i find that you have a a, a private equity firm buying into multiple teams kind of seems like a bit of a conflict of interest now granted they probably won't have operating control right mm-hmm. but not yeah but none. It, so is it just is it just it's more just about money. a capital injection for teams yes. so to speak yes yes and you know what look like you know I, this was something that the commissioner wasn't crazy about for a long time andrew and he kind of stayed away with for a long time but covid has changed everything right like you know these teams yeah. have lost uh, money and we're still, you know, with what's going on in Canada with the fans right now, it's going to hurt the revenues of the league. So I don't think he could stop this any longer, you know, and, you know, I'll tell you, it was obvious at the board of governors meeting. It wasn't something he was thrilled to talk about. Um, he didn't like answering a lot of questions about it. That's for sure. But it's a, you know, it, when you look at what the Penguins saved for the other uh, sold for somewhere between 875 and $900 million, um, you know, teams want to see if they can get that jump. And the other thing, too, is you take a look at the two owners who um, got bought into, Minnesota and Tampa. Those owners, Jeff Vinnick of the Lightning and Craig Leopold of the Wild, they're on the executive committee. And Jeff Vinnick, I think, in particular, if he if he says, I really want to do this, he's probably going to get a wide berth. I, I think the fact that, A, we're coming out of a pandemic, and B, it's Vinnick in particular – I don't think the league is going to battle him too much. Okay. All right. Look, I mean, if it strengthens, and I, and you know what? It, may, it maybe makes sense for Buffalo too. You know my position on Buffalo. They're not. They're not going to be fooling around with the Sabers until at least they know what happens with the Bills Stadium. Yeah. Right. No. And we, there has we, we been rumblings. That. There has been rumblings that I've heard over the past, uh, you know, year or so that uh, that the Sabers maybe part of the Sabers are for sale. My position is, as I've said, is uh, is I don't think they're going to do anything until they know what's happening with the Bills Stadium. It's too important. You don't, I, 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 just in my opinion, you don't ask for a new stadium and then turn around and sell your hockey team. Well, if the Bills win on. the Super Bowl, you could probably even slide that sale in underneath all the news. Nobody will even know That's about true. it. If the Bills <laughs> win the Super Bowl. There will be too many tables broken. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Hey, we have about we we have four minutes for you. Thank you for adjusting your schedule so so Craig could uh, take care of his issues. Uh, <laughs> no worries, uh, all good. Um, don't even laugh at him, Elliot, because that just eggs him on even more. <laughs> Give us something juicy here. Give us something. What are you working on? What what's what's the big story? Like what's shaking the league right now? Other than Evander Kane. Okay, well, I think the trade talk is really going to pick up. I I do. I think you're going to hear Colorado and Carolina mentioned in every trade rumor now until the end of the season. Um, I think those are two teams that are really going to be going for it. Um, I I think it's – I think the trade talk is going to heat up. Chikrin, um, Colorado, Carolina. I think – I think Calgary adds something – just to because they're good, but they just learned last week they need to be a bit better. I think Tampa's still going to add as they go for the three peat. I think I think the trade talk is going to start picking up soon. What right now does Colorado Avalanche need? They are loaded with with game breakers with Goal superstar st- goaltending. Okay, like like, it, like the flurry thing just makes too much sense. I don't know if it'll happen, but it just makes too much sense, Rivs. That's but. Like that's what someone said to me. You're going to hear Colorado and Carolina in every trade rumor now between the end of the season. I still think Boston is going to try to add to, you know, Rask. He practiced with the AHL team again today. And how does that work? He has to sign with the Bruins. He's an unrestricted free agent. He just has to sign there. And I guess he was, he was reported that he was going to go play some games in the minors. Yeah. but they They got COVIDed out. Okay. I, I so know we're going to figure this out. I know Pitt went on a legendary run, but if they slip at all, could you see Malkin or Latang? I can't, I can't see them trading them. You know, the, the problem is Andrew, look at the standings. There's eight teams right. that have separated themselves in the East from everyone else. Right. The West looks like it's going to be a dog fight. It looks in the East. It's going to be a battle for position. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, yes, I didn't, I didn't, I know this is very early. early. It's very early. Pick me your, uh, West and East team to win the Stanley Cup. 
Ooh. I really like Colorado. I do. They'd be even, my last pick. Even Nate Mc, McKinnon with his chickpea pasta and all that stuff. <laughs> I love McKinnon. I think he's great. I'll tell you this. Why I, I'm I'll you know the guy who could really single handedly change the Western Conference is Jack Eichel. Oh yeah, forgot all about that, eh? Yeah. You got you got Vegas on fire, and then they're going to add Jack. Any inside scoop on his? We know his return is still on on pace there, but is he ahead of schedule? I if if you ask him, I've been told he will tell you he's ahead of schedule. I I think if anything, the, the Golden Knights are going to be trying to rein him back a little bit. And what's what's the rush? They're they're doing exceptionally well with because he wants to play like i know he wants to play but you know what i mean i think it's so important just to kind of say jack we need you for the end of the season and in the end of the playoffs just give yourself the ample time you need to come back and be 150 percent craig how many times when you play did someone tell you that you tell them to go f right off Listen, that's why I had an knee surgery on Tuesday. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I didn't listen to anything. And uh, that's, uh, you know, I mean, if I had to give, you know, go back in time, I would want to make sure that I healed myself a lot more than what, uh, what I did. So. We're letting you go in 30 seconds here. Give me a one word answer to describe Patrick Mahomes' brother. <laughs> <laughs> Delete. <laughs> Delete your social. <laughs> that's, nice. that's, that's a perfect one. Elliot, you're the man. Thanks for making this work today, bud. All right, guys. Have a great day. Craig, hope you're feeling all right. Take care, guys. All Thanks, right, buddy, you, Elliot. That's a wrap on another episode of After the Whistle. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, After the Whistle, and at Craig Reve 52 at the Instigator 76 And you can find us, as you already know, on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube, and anywhere else where you can get your podcasts. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to spread the word.